All right, this is Grade 2, Module 5, Lesson 8, where students are, in this lesson, really going to be using the standard official algorithm for adding. And, uh, however, we're going to not just jump straight to the rule, we're going to be using manipulatives so that students can make the connection between the manipulatives and that standard algorithm. So, for teachers, uh, what we probably are going to have in your classroom is students are going to be using place value charts and place value disks and then they're going to be recording this problem in vertical form as they as they work. Um, so for the video for parents because you at home probably don't have place value disks so um, what I'm going to do for everybody is to show how to do it using those dots those number disks, those little dots. And I'm going to do it with the dots, although teachers, your students are probably going to use actual like chips, poker chips or something that are labeled hundreds, tens, and ones. Um, and then at home, parents, you can do what I'm showing here. Uh, so anyway, so let's model this and we're going to begin by writing the problem vertically. S 364 plus 326. All right. And so now we're going to model that. And so let's first get my blue and let's model 364. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 364 because we've got 3 in the hundreds, 6 in the tens, four in the ones. And now we're going to model 320 and then six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. There we go. So now we're going to start with the ones place and we are going to, let's see, I'm grabbing my colors here, and we're going to regroup as necessary. So first, let's take a look at how many dots we now have in the ones column. So we know we have four up here, we have six down here, so four plus six is ten. And that anytime you have ten in a column, you can cash them in for one in the column over. So that means we know that we can add these ten together group them together for a single dot in the tens column. So what is that going to look like over here? Well, it means we have, let's see, if I look back over here, I have zero left in the ones column because everything got cashed in and moved over. And then this is the one that we got added to the tens column. So over here, in our vertical form, it's going to look like 0 with a 1. So there's our 10. So what does that mean? Well, when we had 4 and 6, that's 10. They all got cashed in to equal one additional disk in the tens column, and we had no disks left over in the ones column. So now we're going to go back over here, and let's count. How many tens do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine in the tens column. And that's not enough to need any regrouping. So over here, oopsies. So over here in the vertical form, we have six plus two plus one, that's nine. And so we're going to write down 9 right here. 9 tens, because we had 6 tens plus 2 tens plus 1 ten equals 9 tens. And that's what we had over here. So I can write down 9 in my tens column. And then taking a look at the hundreds column, we have 3 up here, 3 hundreds plus another 3 hundreds. That gives us 6 hundreds all together. And sure enough, in our vertical form, 3 hundreds plus 3 hundreds gives us six hundreds. And so that's how we can show 
how the place value disks relates to the standard algorithm. All right, let's do another practice doing the exact same thing where we're going to relate the place value chart and the place value disks to the standard algorithm. And so I'm going to begin by drawing our place value chart here. We've got our hundreds, our tens, and our ones. And we're going to mod, oh, let's write it over here, 384 plus 225. And now we're going to model that problem using place value disks. So 384, we've got three in the hundreds column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the tens column, and one, two, three, four in the ones column. So there's our 384. In the same way, we're going to model 225. So that's two in the two hundred in the hundreds column, two in the tens column, and one, two, three, four, five in the ones column. So now that we've modeled the problem, now we're ready to start solving this problem. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the ones column here. We have four up here and five down here. So we have a total of nine in the ones column, and that's not enough to need any regrouping at all. So what would that look like over here in our, our vertical form? It would look like this because four ones plus five ones equals nine ones, and there's not enough dots that require regrouping. So now we're gonna go over here back to our place value chart, and let's look at the tens column. So we know we have eight up here, and we have two more down here, so that's a total of 10 in the tens column. And so whenever you have 10, that means you can group them together for a single dot and exchange them for a single dot in the next column over. So 10 tens is equal to a single dot in the hundreds column. So we cached all of these in. So what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, it means down here we have no tens left over because they all got cached in. So that means we're going to have a zero down here and then Here's our extra dot that got moved over into the hundreds column. So what does that look like over here in our vertical form? Well, 8 plus 2, 8 tens plus 2 tens equals 10 tens. Those 10 tens can be cashed in for an, a dot in the hundreds column, and we have no dots left over in the tens column. So you can see 8 plus 2 is 10. So that's 0 left over in the tens column and 1 in the hundreds column. And then let's go back to our place value chart. We've got 3 hundreds plus 2 hundreds plus 100. That gives us 6 in the hundreds column. And so over here in vertical form, 3 hundreds plus 2 hundreds plus 100 gives us six hundreds, nothing needs to be regrouped, so our answer is 609. So I included this set of problems in this video just because it's, I don't know, I, I, I thought I saw kind of a neat pattern that we would love for our second graders to discover. So we're going to start with this 200 plus 400, which students are likely to be able to do mentally and get the answer of 600. Um, and then we're going to move to 220 plus 400. So again, if they wanted to, students could do 220 plus 400, and they could be practicing that standard algorithm. No ones plus no ones is equal to no ones. <laughs> um, two tens plus no tens is equal to two tens, and then lastly, two hundreds plus four hundreds equals six hundreds. All right, so we could see that the answer would be 620. Or students might see a really cool pattern over here. The four hundreds stayed the same when we went from this problem to this problem, 
but the 200 got bigger by 20. That means our answer is going to get bigger by 20. That's a nice little pattern that some of our second graders might see. Again, going from problem B to problem C, well, the 220 stays the same, but the 400 got bigger by 440. It got bigger to 440, so it got bigger by 40, which means our answer is going to get bigger by 40 and bump us up to 660, and so on. So it's kind of a neat idea, and so students, not only can they get practice vertically if they want to practice that vertical standard algorithm, but they also might be able to see a really cool pattern as we move down from problem to problem to problem. And this is just another example of that same concept that we begin with a fairly simple answer of 560, but then when we move from here, from problem F to problem G, we see that uh, the 500 stays the same, but the 60 gets bigger by 100. So that means our answer has to get bigger by 100. So our new sum is 660. Similarly, this got bigger by 40. This one stayed the same. So that means our answer is going to get bigger by 40, which bumps us up to 700, and so on and so forth. I just thought I would share this really cool little pattern that Eureka Math threw in there for the benefit of our kids. So that wraps up Grade 2, Module 5, Lesson 8, where students are, are starting to use that standard algorithm. However, uh, not just because it's a blindly followed rule. Instead, it's because it makes sense because they're relating it to the place value chart and, uh, and connecting that place value chart to the standard algorithm.